Welcome to the Football Friends Podcast. It's your boy Gage here for another week, and I'm joined by the lovely Paddy. Oh, I'm lovely this week, am I? Yeah, sure, why not? How you am doing? I lovely every week? Am I lovely every week, or just this week? Look, look, just, just treasure the moment, okay? This... <laughs> okay, just this week, I'll, t- I'll take that. That's fair enough. If Ash was here, would he be lovely? Uh, let's not, let's let's start the show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, no Ash this week, uh, but that's all good. So, because uh, mainly we're going to be talking about the Champions League final, and yeah, that's that's a good that's a good way of summing it up, I think. But uh, <laughs> of course. Um, there was a bit of drama before the the match even kicked off. You know, we had uh, Liverpool fans, some not even managing to get into the stadium, uh, but after like an hour wait, an hour, the game was delayed for half an hour at least. Yeah, and, and then Camilla Cabello did some shit, <laughs> and yeah, uh, <laughs> and uh, and then even half an hour into the game, many Liverpool fans were still not in the stadium. Due to yeah. some some kind of crazy drama, I guess. Yeah, well, from from what I hear, outside the stadium, most most fans were in place, you know, plenty early. Like they were able to get, yeah, they were able to get in place, and even the ones who got there early still didn't get into the stadium on time. Yeah, that's that's um ah, oh, I'm blanking on the term right now, but they they call it that in American football, a tailgate. You know, that's what everyone does before a sports match. They're having a tailgate, which is you basically party in a car park <laughs> nearby <laughs> until you can get into the stadium. And and that's what they were doing, man. They were there all day. Like, and apparently there's some organized crime ring with it, like causing all like all of this trouble and stuff like that. And then the riot the French riot police or whatever got in there and tear gas <laughs> everyone and Tear gas uh, football fans. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, they're probably all standard. Uh, probably yes, that kind of thing. <laughs> but, fair, you mentioned an organized crime ring there. Like, we do know about UEFA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. We, we, you know, they are organizing the competition, allegedly. Mm-hmm. And this, you know, this is not the... No, we had the Euro final at Wembley, of it, and, like, and... You know, again, again, another terribly um, organized UEFA event. Like, this, yeah, yeah. How how often does this need to happen? How many? Like, it doesn't it, it? It's not just English sport fans, right? It's this is the, the, there's there's crowd violence and crowd, um, you know, misbehavior wherever you go and whatever sport you watch this there's no way that the the england game and the liverpool game are the only ones that happened there and i don't think it's any coincidence that you know uefa couldn't they could barely run a bar let alone a, a champions league final yeah yeah i know it's pretty sham- shambles i mean how often games are hardly ever it's very rare a game is delayed at all <laughs> so yeah it's kind of safe yeah and well, before we go into the game, what do you think about this? Um, I almost want to say like Americanizing. They're like trying to turn it into the Super Bowl as well. Like you know, <laughs> absolutely hate it. <laughs> like when yeah, like I mentioned the Camilla Cabello thing, and I was like, Who, who's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, I, I watched this thing and dance around for a bit, and I thought, well, what the hell is the point in this? He um he piped up on online and was um very annoyed that. That, um, both Liverpool and Madrid fans were singing their team's like, anthem um, <laughs> during her performance. Oh my god! That <laughs> which is amazing. Man, can they? Can um, they, like it's you know it's you pay someone to sing, but you can't pay them to shut the fuck up, can you? <laughs> no. Nah. Also, like th- those fans paid to get in. Hey, you know, uh, most of them, I assume, apart from the um, the fake crime tickets, mm. um, they all paid to get in, and 
you know, they can they can sing if they want. They can sing other songs if they want. They don't have to go along with what you're doing. Mm. Game of football, mate. And that's, that, that's exactly the, another thing. Like this, she's American, right? Like this this American artist, yeah, doesn't understand this. Like we don't we don't do this. We don't have an opening ceremony. Well, or we do. We've had one foisted upon us by. Yeah again by uefa yeah it's just more money grabbing isn't it and at least at least in the super bowl it's at half time when you know there's not much going on like <laughs> so you can go grab a drink or something and you don't have to watch it <laughs> yeah yeah exactly right it's like ample time to go and take a shit yeah and they because they like had to cover the entire pitch in like a tarpaulin for the dancers Absolutely. and all that stuff yeah. and yeah horrendous just what a waste of time i'm just not into it <laughs> yeah and well, and just to create, she, I think she's Cuban actually, but yeah, um, okay, Cuban American or something, but yeah, and like I mean, it's not like it's Shakira, like someone with a link to football, you know. <laughs> that'd be kind of dodgy, you know. Boyfriend plays for <laughs> play for the rival team. Yeah, yeah, so it's the only example I could think of. <laughs> Fair enough. But um, a little mix. Yeah, I, that that I think Camilla isn't Camilla Cabello from Little Mix. <laughs> I think so. See, look, and since we're representative of football fans everywhere, this is how important Camilla Cabello is. <laughs> yeah, this is how we feel about pop stars singing before <laughs> Champions League finals. She didn't even do a song about football. Like, <laughs> that would be a if, if she honestly, I'd be all for it if she just <laughs> sung all of her own songs, but instead of like "Baby," she sang messy or whatever like, like, all the words are changed to football things yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right well enough of this preamble <laughs> we might as well get into the game itself and it was you know it, it, the way it always goes is these matches are hyped up so hard and then the match itself is, is kind of a bit dull and you know it's usually only going to be a one goal kind of game and but the game was dull well it, it uh, there were certainly more thrilling matches leading up to it. So, yeah. like, like, compared to the, some of the semifinals and things like that, it was probably one of the duller matches. Um, yeah, I don't think that's wrong. And, yeah, I, I would say uh, Liverpool had a, a, a incredible first 20 minutes. It was it seemed like it was all going great. Yeah. And, but I suppose... Um, I mean, it was, man, Real Madrid's ex experience god mode team, you know, all of these mm -hmm. vet veterans just sort of yeah. able to soak up the pressure. And, you know, players like Carvajal, possibly one of the best games I've seen him play in years. Not that he's bad, you know, it was just he was just... Not at all. So dominant. And then... Uh, well, nearly that entire... Madrid lineup has five Champions Leagues individually. Yeah, yeah. The, does, that, does that make sense? Like, yeah. Look at look at the unexperienced, inexperienced, sorry, mm. um, players in the Madrid lineup. You'd have you'd say Valverde, Vinicius, and Militao. Militao, yeah, that's probably about it. Oh, well, and I mean Alaba, not experienced with well, Real Al Madrid, but yeah. Well, still a, a healthy career. Yeah, definitely, and. And the thing is, and Valverde was one of the best players out there as well, too. Like, yeah, Valverde, one of the best players in the pitch. Militao, one of the best players in the pitch. Vinicius Jr. scores the winning goal. And I think Valverde sets it up. <laughs> so, Valverde did set it up. So, yeah, that's cool. And the thing is, that tactic, uh, if you call it a tactic, has been... Um, oh, what's the coach's name again? <laughs> oh, Carlo. I'm, Ancelotti. I'm, Ancelotti, I'm tired. <laughs> Please give me a break. Um that's he's been running this tactic the entire time through the champions league and by that i mean uh this idea of starting with all the veterans and then they bring on the young hungry guys Thanks. after 60 minutes and they just sort of tear open the game and yeah oh look one thing i noticed that even when you know we had like luis diaz had a, had a very um lively opening opening half Mm. Um, Mane as well had a had a good opening half. Yeah, they that... didn't they didn't look phased. They did, they absolutely just didn't look phased. And even when Courtois was full stretch to save Mane's shot, 
mm. onto the post. Um, you know, the defenders were calm and they mm. gathered the ball and they just hoofed it out. Mm. But they, they 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 all sorted it out. It was it, it was amazing. Yeah, they they had the well. That was what basically every commentator said after they won was that they basically played the calmest ninety minutes of football ever. It, and it, it was. It, it really was. Like um, you know, we we talk about Liverpool being a team of great mentality, and I th- and I think we were. I think we you know yeah. It's it, it's clear to see that we. We were a team of great mentality. We were a team of great, um, you know, effort and ambition and, and all of these things. Um, but we also came up against probably the best midfield three that there is. Um, mm-hmm. and, and just and a brilliant, compact, narrow tactic. So, you know, we were allowed a lot of space on the wide areas. It's like, okay, cool. So your guys who can cross the ball, they we let them. Cool. Mm. Alexander Arnold had a lot of crosses. Mm, definitely. Um, Robertson was allowed a lot of crosses. And where do those crosses go? The back four who were all stood inside the box. Mm. Yeah, and and they were happy to uh, sit a bit deeper and absorb the pressure as well. And yeah, and it, yeah, it worked really well. And uh, well, yeah, you mentioned the midfield. I thought Casemiro also had one of the incredible game. Uh, he, he just made every tackle and like so dominant and yeah that just yeah like the commentators was like, what you said too the there was you know Liverpool's described as the menta- mentality monster that's the term they always say and then and they got out mentality it's pretty crazy to think that's even possible and uh, you know I I think for once I don't think it, I don't think it is that crazy but I mean, I'm obviously I'm I'm upset, you know, and we we lost, but um, mm. it, it, it well, yeah, well, this Anche, is... Ancelo, Ancelotti is is just incre- like the record man. What are you, yeah, the record man? That's what he said after the game. Yeah, he's like, like I am the is, record man. It is clear, I am the record man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, okay, so and and I agree that that Mane the shot in the the first 20 minutes the one that Courtois saved onto the post was that was oh my god like razor's edge close that was probably the yeah. the closest in the whole game and the, the, and that is the thing that these games and these tournaments are decided on you have a, you have a, mm. like it's one game you can you can lose by that margin or you can because i mean equally we look at another margin how close was Vinicius to being offside for his goal? He wasn't offside. Mm. He was definitely onside. But what are we talking? Four inches? Five inches? Well, and, and the, the, the ball had to be curled in the perfect way to actually re- reach him like that. To reach him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and Trent had to be paying, you know, a lack of attention in the perfect way. Oh. Yeah, exactly. I know, because he just sort of sneaks up behind him. It was... Uh, yeah it was crazy and and well so that yeah what i wanted to say was where i'll push back a little bit is i actually think um it seemed to me like salah salah had quite a few shots like right at courtois and he sort of seemed to lose his head a little bit and i also thought robertson seemed a bit rushed back as well i I was i I wasn't sure about this was but how many games had he played Mm -hmm. back before this match because Robertson, I don't. Did he even get? Oh yeah, he did get. He did get hurt. Yeah, but he's um. But it had been Simicus at the end of the season, hadn't it? I thought. Yeah, a little bit. He he picked up a knock. Yeah. So he's probably been playing with like injections. Yes. See, I thought it was something like that, and it, it was probably the same for Tiago because. All right. T- yeah. Yeah. And Fab. Mm, so, because yeah, Tiago looked didn't. I mean, he didn't look bad. He just didn't look. To, he his passes weren't quite as awesome, you know. Like some of them were just a bit stray, and uh, which is uncharacteristic, you know. I, I think Real Madrid gave an absolute demonstration in how to defend space really well. So mm. they didn't man mark us, but they also didn't. But they also like the way they zonally marked. They were just close enough where it's like, oh, here's a guy. I've got to, I've got to do something different. 
Mm. but just far away where they've given you half a second on the ball to do something stupid. Mm. And yeah. it's not like we did something stupid. We we threatened we threatened all game. Yeah. Um. I think I think you're right as well. Mo Mo has looked off, you know, off color for maybe a couple months. Mm. Um. Well, yeah, and it's just not to his usual high, high standard, you know, unbelievable standards. Yeah, but yeah. He, well, he had he had two shots which were effectively right in the corner. One was tipped around a post mm. by Gautois, and one was saved sort of on his arm, like on his bicep. Yeah, yeah. That that one for me were like, and that was the one where he saved it. It just spirals over the post and. And then Mo's like beating the ground. He's he's absolutely like beside himself. He's like, mm. how can this keeper have this game? Yeah, and and see that, like I was saying, when I saw that, and comparing that to the calmness of Real Madrid, it made me think like this is the wrong attitude to have right now. You you need to yeah. be yeah you need to be just getting back into it and just concentrating on doing the job and like so yeah. But you know, someone has to win, and this is to to the best performing teams around at the moment. So, yeah. Um, you want to you want to look at Liverpool played sixty three games this and, season. Yeah, we lost we lost four, um, which is ridiculous. <laughs> <That's>, but <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, on top of that, our two best players also went all the way to the final of the African cup. So mm. that's another, what do you want to say? Uh, six games, six, seven games, I think. So they played 69 games, lol. <laughs> and then, a, and then a playoff final as well for the world cup. So these, these guys played over 70 games. Oh yeah. And, and, and competed in, you know, if you want to call the playoff final a final, then five finals between them, yeah, sorry, each. Sure. Mm. Uh, the, the you know, they're the most successful, highly ambitious people in in the world, basically, and and they're completely crushing it. And, and well, and did you see oh. too that like the, or basically all the teams that won all the other leagues the the points they had would have only got them third in the premier league you know yeah well look liverpool's liverpool's leagues I, how how am i meant to be unhappy like okay so we got beaten we got just beaten have, in the champion just happy to be there mate <laughs> look I, of course i want to win of course like do i want mm. to win a quadruple yeah yeah i do but like Look at how, look at how tired we look. It's, mm. it is, it is possible, as in it is like mathematically possible. Yeah. But well, well, I also you think... have to, you have to be so perfect. Yeah. It, look, and the reality is, on another day, some of those shots would have gone. Like, to, you know, they would gone in. Like, it, it's yeah. so look, in, in a way, well, you got a good bit unlucky. Made, Courtois made nine saves in the final. Yeah, and, and literally ten out of ten rating. The yeah, oh, yeah. So, um, I think he and I think he made fifty during the the Champions League campaign. Allison made fourteen, and it's not because he was you know making mistakes or anything. It's mm -hmm. probably made it would have made a few, but it's because yeah, he was. Um, you know, th these keepers play in in different ways, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's really funny to think that um Madrid's uh campaign started with a two one loss to Sheriff. True, I I completely forgotten about that. You're right. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it, it just nuts. Yeah, yeah. That that's that's just. <laughs> oh man, and. Okay, so, and then, yeah, so after this 20 minutes, though, uh, it did seem to go Madrid's favour for at least the till the end of that half. And they did have uh, a goal, which was, um, uh, it was VAR, right? It was for... Yes. 
uh, off yeah. site. Yeah, because it was not a... It, it, did, it did come off Fabinho and someone and but mm-hmm. but obviously not an intentional back pass or anything like that and yeah Benzema would have been offside yeah he, he's offside because this I was I mean Allison's out but it's still only one guy uh, yeah. on, on he, the goal he, line he's he's in an offside position yeah, mm, yeah my my question is so by the letter of the law it is offside yeah my question is ignore that should it be yeah, that see, I was I was hoping you'd you'd bring this up, and I almost want to say no because, like, technically, I'm I think, is it who is Fabinho and who's the other player? Is it Thiago? Or... So it's Canate. Yeah, I, it's like Fabinho kicks it into Canate. So look, man, he made the pass. What do you want me to say? <laughs> no, no, he didn't. He didn't make a pass. It was okay. to me. It felt more like a bad touch rather than. It, it's it's not it's not even a touch though it's just a deflection yeah, like if you want to yeah. look i'm i'm happy for you to say i don't care it came off a liverpool player intentional or not intentional fine because hmm. it, it kind of felt more like you guys got away with an error uh even though it is the role you know because it it was the error of both of them coming in at the same time that kind of caused that because i don't think yeah. And I think it was Valverde again, wasn't it? I don't think he actually touched the ball at all. And I'm unsure. Yeah, it was. It happened so fast. And and even if he, yeah, even if he did, it went like, um, well, yeah, it went Fabinho into Canada, whatever, and then it came through. And then if he did, I mean, if it then technically Benzema's offside anyway because he started the play. So yeah, it it can't be a goal you know, morally, <laughs> maybe you could say it, it was, but look, I, yeah, I, I see, but I see both parts, but yeah, it's, it's well, man, a really tough one to call. And that's, you know, how long did it take him to make that decision? Like six minutes or something. Yeah. Ridiculous. A long time. It felt like um, forever, man. God, these, these players, yeah. they were, it didn't even go extra time and they were playing until like 10 o'clock, you know? <laughs> yeah. By the, by the letter of the law, it's it's not a goal, but yeah, you're right. It kind of did feel like we got away with one. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and then and then it was kind of the same thing. Second half, uh, well, kind of Real Madrid sort of was still on top a little bit. They got their goal, and then when Klopp subbed, and uh, I think it was the second sub when you brought Firmino on. Yeah, and it was like four forwards. <laughs> it, yeah, it was looking like you guys were going to turn it around. You, it's well, it was... well, Bobby is someone I thought we should have had on from the very start. Hmm. Yeah, interesting you, choice you, with Diaz. I would say. Yeah, I think Diaz should have been subbed on for Bobby, or you know, or someone else if they were having a poor game. But hmm. yeah. You look I, at, as Mane and Salah, I'm not saying they're all carbon copies, but they're they're quite similar. And Bobby mm. is a different dimension. Bobby takes up a different area of the pitch. He 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 moves around in different ways. He moves like he moves forward and back, whereas Mo, Salah, and Mane move sort of left and right. They like they run up and down as well, but they 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 mm. point in, whereas yeah. Bobby goes up forward and back well and i mean because well, i kind of agree it, it seems like liverpool were trying to catch real madrid out on pace and because yeah you, you pick your three fastest guys probably and yeah but then when you think about how how good benzema was in that game part of the reason him being good was you know he's he's starting the play from the center back position <laughs> like, yeah yeah, he he is a complete forward in that he's able to do the work of of like a player like Firmino and a player like Salah. He is he is mm. so it, yeah. He he runs he runs all the way back, starts the play, and then runs all the way to the other end <laughs> to score. You know, I mean, he didn't score, but you know what I'm saying. And yeah, just yeah. I don't, I don't know if the Champions League has an MVP, but it's got to be. If if it does, 
in oh Easy well Man. well look he's that he's a huge shout for ultimate mvp right the ballon d'Or. yeah it's it's looking yeah. pretty pretty likely and man yeah, what, golden what, ball totally makes sense because i mean you know ronaldo and messi both sort of dipped a bit this season um and uh even someone like mbappe or whatever didn't quite get to that standard either it's got to be benzema man just for accomplishments and well this is also his highest goal scoring season ever and Ridiculous. to think that when he i think you know he didn't score too many goals in the group and you know halia scored like 10 or 11 or something insane and then he'd surpassed him by the end of the knockouts like it, by doing two hat tricks <laughs> yeah yeah so just absolute and and all of these goals were the, the comebacks R- real madrid had possibly the hardest route to the final as well yeah they, and, they played they played the three richest teams in the world and then Liverpool, who are probably not far off that list anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and and basically, you know, a list of who's who in in terms of the best teams in Europe. Hmm. Yeah, and... Well, and they... I mean, they took out... They took out Manchester City, who... I mean, you know, performed one point better than Liverpool in the league. <laughs> so at least, you know, they had already played a team or and eliminated a team of on the caliber of Liverpool. Whereas I don't know if Liverpool who did you who did you guys knock out? Uh well, our group was Atletico, Porto and Milan. Then we yeah. played Inter, mm. then we played Benfica. Then we played the Real. So you're right. We did not at any point play a team of the caliber of Madrid. Yeah. Um, yeah. And other than when we were playing in the league. Yeah. So I think uh, that made a big difference as well. They had the hardest route. So then coming into that match, they're like, look, well, well, not only did they have the hardest route, some of those matches seemed completely unwinnable after the first leg. And then they turned it around. Like, okay. so- oh. But forget that. One of them seemed completely unwinnable on the 89th minute of the second game. Oh my god, Rod. Yeah, Rodrigo. What the? F- <laughs> Holy shit! Like, it's almost like it, it's almost like God Himself was writing Real Madrid season. Yeah, he's he's like, wait, Benzema hasn't won the Ballon d'Or. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, let us give him one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, but then, yeah. but then, yeah, that this last again, the last so the first twenty minutes and then the last twenty minutes, Liverpool looked like they deserved to win it, and they were going hundies, but they just couldn't break down that, um, that wall of, yeah, and wall and, of white, and yeah, even Ferland Mendy played very good as well, and um, Dave Alaba like. All, all of their defenders yeah. played amazing, and then name, name a Madrid player who had a bad game. Name the worst Madrid player. Mm. So yeah, that's that's an interesting yeah. inter- interesting you say that too, because like I said, we can sort of point out uh, players in the Liverpool side having a bad game, but everyone in the Real Madrid team played well, and it was a team, yeah. a team, a very team, big team effort. Yeah, a, te- a team performance in which individuals all played basically perfectly yeah yeah and actually i, I want to say i forgot to say this before but like what, what's the deal with valverde man like what position does this guy fucking play like i thought he no was, idea I, I thought when he started he was, he was like a center, center midfielder did, did he play center back you know when he notoriously got his first red card and like sergio ramos nah. was like you're my son <laughs> <laughs> it must have been defensive right. midfield no nah, he was playing he was, maybe he was filling in at, at center back but he was he's a midfielder yeah, but he certainly was defensive. I I'm pretty sure. And then, but then yeah, now then he's just now he plays right wing. I guess. So. <laughs> yeah, how does that happen? Yeah, well, I suppose the in Spain right mid is kind of a like you can be a midfield like a centre mid and play right mid. And but yeah, yeah, look at someone like look at someone like Esco. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Not not the paciest guy on the planet, but has been sort of farmed out on left or right wing before mm. and it's just like oh this, this guy does good 
crosses. He's a good, a wide, he's a wide playmaker. Yeah, yeah, and that that wide playmaker position is it's just very um, Spanish, characteristically Spanish. So yeah, uh, and oh, I mean, even though he's Uruguayan or whatever, <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, but he's a, a footballer in Spain. Yeah, yeah. So that yeah, that and just. On the day, it, you know, it just had to go Real Madrid's way, I guess. Yeah. All the stars aligned. And, um, hmm. you know, this year's, this year's not our year. But um, what I did enjoy was was Klopp saying after the game, you know, oh, where's where's the final next year? <laughs> Turkey. Good. Book, book's a hotel now. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, 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 what, that's why I love this man. It, <laughs> it's like, cool. We just had, we just had a... Um, a you know, call it a failure. We just had a failure in the biggest game on the planet. Um, what can we do now? We've got to rev them up again. We've got to get their mentalities going again. Yeah, and I was it um because oh one other thing was man the the host of commentators for this final was amazing. They had everyone, you know, and I think was it Jamie Carragher who was like talking heaps of shit after the game, and <laughs> and he said he said something about that like. Yeah, he's like, yeah, we're going to book this hotel or whatever. And then and then he was like, and the other commentators were like laughing at him, like, like you're right, calm down, mate. Like, And then and then he's like, who's it going to be, like Man U or Arsenal? And he's sitting there with like a whole room full of Man U and Arsenal legends. <laughs> and they're yeah. all just immediately like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I think Schmeichel, um, Peter Schmeichel was like, you know, well he's like look mate like you gotta calm down you guys you guys are a domestic cup team <laughs> what i mean <laughs> look i think that's that's ridiculous what, what i see what i see a lot being made of is um liverpool's failure to score in three um finals this year mm. so okay so we, we, we went scoreless against Chelsea twice. In in the first game, who played in goal? You tell me. Edward, Edward Mendy. And he, he basically played the game of his fucking life. He oh, he made right. two yeah. he made a couple of saves that were just uh, like impossible. And then we went to penalties and we didn't miss one. So we won the game. Mm-hmm. And, and then we play, played in the FA Cup final. We hit the post about 400 times and we play in the Champions League final and Courtois has the game of his life. Madrid set up, no, not to, not like parking the bus or anything, but they defend. Mm. They defend. Yeah, yeah. Well, they... their, their, their shape is there to... Um, Counteract the crossing abilities of our players, so yeah, they're sure. they're set up in mind to defend, mm-hmm. for the, at least for the first part of the game. Yeah, yeah. So, like, pardon me if we don't s- score fifteen goals on Real Madrid and Chelsea in three games. Yeah, we man. also like took we took we took four championships right to the last game of each. That's true. Yeah, good point, actually. And and you know, completely nuts. And it took Courtois to have like the game of his life, like nine nine saves, and they were yeah. a lot of really good saves, like amazing saves. And yeah, so I know what you what mean. He said. I, I know I give you what? shit. I know I give you shit for it, but yeah, I wouldn't be dis- <laughs> I wouldn't be disappointed either. <laughs> what he said after the game actually is like, you know, I I feel like I needed this for my career. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I needed, that. I needed some more respect on my name, especially from fans in England. What do you think yes. of that? Yeah, I I like that. Yeah, because he he'd been um he even said something like you know he was on Twitter the night before, which is like the dumbest thing in the world. And they're all like, oh, you're gonna get banged, bro. You know, you're all you were always shit against English teams, like. <laughs> and then he showed what a, <laughs> what a load of nonsense. Mm-mm. Like personally, like. Was he even that bad for Chelsea? Didn't they win a league title with him and goal? No, uh, he was not. Um, oh yeah, yeah, I think they did. <laughs> but like you know, it it. Oh, it's hard to say. I mean, he. Uh, you'd say probably Real Madrid is the height of his career, but yeah, he, he wasn't bad at Chelsea at all. It's pretty ridiculous to. 
Yeah. It, you know what it is? It's Chelsea, Chelsea fans are cunts. <laughs> <laughs> they don't uh, yes they, they don't understand when they have a good thing we never which, um, which actually links to them harassing um and suggesting he should be sold this week um online christian pull yeah that, that, it's like, that's exactly what i'm talking about that and that's what yeah. maybe you know that's the the clickbait title i read to form this opinion <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> but yeah like it's how many players have Chelsea just let go because they're just like the fans get mad at them for something stupid. Like, it, yep. and yeah, like they've let Courtois go, De Bruyne, Salah, uh, you know, look, it's endless. Like it's, and look, I'll take a Pulisic. <laughs> He's yeah, a good... exactly. And Pulisic will go somewhere else and become a stud. Mm. yeah for sure like not guaranteeing it but he'll become an absolute beast yeah he's he's so young he's 20 23 or whatever 20 23 24 so that yeah. and that, exa that's exactly around that age when they start chelsea start going like oh you know whatever he, he's not he's not ronaldo by 23 so let's get rid of him <laughs> um yeah yeah look it's it's a good point he's I I, th I think he's a gun, and I think he's going to only get better. But yeah, um, yeah. you know, yeah. Chelsea suck ass is yeah. is basically the um the takeaway. <laughs> yeah, fuck Chelsea. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you for agreeing. I'm glad we we're glad we have a point of agreement. Yeah, yeah, great. Uh, all right. Um, uh, that yeah, that sort of covers all of the main parts of it, right? Uh, was was there anything else that happened afterwards or? Um, another Camilla Cabello um, performance. Was it? No. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 there wasn't. But, um... mm. Oh, sorry, no. I just remembered this. There was one thing that we forgot to mention last, that I forgot to mention last week. Did you hear what happened to Noel Gallagher when Manchester City won the league? No. <laughs> well, you know, when they finally won that match and everyone just went absolutely nuts apparently uh ruben diaz's father was uh in the same stand as noel gallagher who of course is an insane city fan and yes. apparently like they all jumped up in such a dramatic fast way that the head of ruben diaz's father went straight into the face of noel gallagher and broke his Ooh. broke his nose <laughs> Ow. and he sprayed blood from his face everywhere and had to be rushed to hospital and he missed the end of the game and the celebration no <laughs> yeah and you know him being noel gallagher yeah. okay, i've got two things to say i've got i've got two things to say first of all i think a bunch of man city fans would probably actually like like to have noel gallagher's blood sprayed on them yeah like, in yeah. some sort of weird like football ritual <laughs> yeah yeah um, and the second thing is Noel Gallagher's really missed out there because given that he's Noel Gallagher, he probably would have been allowed in the dressing room. Like he would have been yeah, allowed yeah. to, you 100%. know, cohort with the um with the players shortly after the game. It's like oh, definitely. Unlucky. Yeah. I think they and he's got a, he's I, got a broken nose. I think they like visit him in hospital and shit. <laughs> Especially Ruben Diaz's father. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fun. <laughs> And yeah, yeah. So, see, look. Why is it not? Why is it not Noel Gallagher playing at halftime? Like, <laughs> at least he's a oh, football. I thought player. you were gonna say, why is it not Noel Gallagher playing it right back? <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. Just yeah. Last game of the season, you've only got to have um, fans play. The fans play the game, and you've just got to sort yourself out. Mm -hmm. yeah he'd just be like that um the 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 range was it the rangers no the player from frankfurt that got his head fucking exploded <laughs> sprayed blood everywhere. oh yeah oh sebastian wrote it yeah. yeah just play on just play on mate <laughs> yeah don't worry about it 
Yeah. Okay. All right. Have we um have we got a few minutes to spare to talk about the uh, championship playoff final? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Um, All right. Well, uh, well, um, you and I, you and I both both know what what bloody well happened. Nottingham Forest have been promoted to the Premier League for the first time in twenty three years. Yeah. Very good. Very impressive. Um, and um, saw off saw off Huddersfield who um were in it not too long ago. I'm thinking maybe about four. Maybe four seasons. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. And, you know, they call this this match, but they, they say it's the most expensive match. No, what is it? The most valuable match yeah. in football or something like that. Yeah. Oh, God. What a, again, cringe. Because get getting promoted to the Premier League, of course, like you get, you a, get money. 100, 100 mil or something ridiculous. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, both of these in, teams really need, really want that. <laughs> well, yeah. Huddersfield have been operating on, you know, no money and, and Nottingham Forest, not much more. Hmm. Um, was, but Nottingham Forest, I suppose, was historically quite a good team, right? They were. Well, they, you want to know something? They've won two European Cups, and and only one English Premier Division. Oh right, okay. But yeah. they've only won the league. They only won the league once. Hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Only. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. They won the league once. Yeah, well, it's cool. It's 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 good to see them them back in it. But um, yeah, bit of a contentious match, I'd say. Um, oh yeah, very very contentious. Uh, do you want to start? Well, well, so yeah. Well, so I just, first I'll start, start just by saying. Things? Oh no, I'll start with the golf. I mean, the goal kind of came before because first thing I want to say is that you know it was big ups to our Manchester United boy James James Garner who sort of was definitely involved in the goal that uh, put Nottingham Forest ahead. He sort of, you know, kicked a big long-range kind of pass shot thing. And... Call it a cross? Yeah, yeah. It was a bit, was, you know, it was quite straight. I don't know. It was like... You can do a straight cross. Yeah, yeah, okay. And, yeah, and it just sort of um, was put the ball in a very awkward position and uh, then ultimately the defender put it in. Yeah, so an own goal, but it was like a creative. It was an absolute scrape. Yeah, yeah, and and that's good. He's actually played. He's actually had a very good season with Nottingham Forest, and uh, I think he's actually been there for the last two seasons. This was the second season at Nottingham Forest on loan, and uh, oh, good for him. And so yeah, he's been an integral part of this team, and uh, there we go. He's helped to get them promoted, and he played very well throughout the season. So that's good. And as a result of this, he has been. He's definitely on Ten Hag's uh, radar for list. Yeah, and there's so there's either talk of him uh, being a squad player, or uh, I I think I've seen the next loan maybe Everton actually. So I mean he's interesting. Yeah, yeah, but good on him. It's good to see um some good players. <laughs> right. So from there, do we move on to yeah the, the... The two penalty shouts. Yeah, so the the first the first penalty is first one you weren't quite sure about, but I I thought it probably was. Yeah, I, okay. Now that I've had a minute to process, because I'm notorious for just screaming something ridiculous and then walking it back. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've met you. The yeah, so my the viewpoint I'm going from is he the shape of his leg is very much that shape when you're looking to get tripped you know like you can mm. sort of, you know what i mean like it's he but but the thing is even if you're looking for it they still did it <laughs> it's not, yeah no one that's, says that's you right can, no one says you can't look for it if they actually fucking foul you so like it's not like he simulated the contact exactly he didn't make yeah. it up yeah, yeah. He he got himself into a position to be fouled, and he was. <laughs> so yeah, I personally don't even think he like because he was given a yellow card for diving, yeah, which is absurd. Absurd. Um, he he didn't dive. He just pulled his leg out of the way so that he wasn't absolutely clobbered, and then it turns out that he was fouled anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like he, yeah, I know what you're saying. You're trying to say he's trying to do the, the jump over the leg thing. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's 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 the thing. In that moment, you can choose to be tripped, you know, in a way. But it doesn't matter. That is true. It doesn't matter. He sort of he he got trapped. I don't. It's 
you're not yeah. you don't actually have to you're not obligated to jump over them <laughs> you know yeah, yeah it's not a game of hurdles yeah exactly yeah so pretty hard done by even on that one well like even the um the nottingham forest defender you could see him like making the sign of the cross on his um on his chest because he was like you know thankful <laughs> whichever god <laughs> Whichever god um, it was that allowed that penalty to not be given. Mm, yeah, I know, pretty crazy. And then, and then, yeah, if that wasn't enough, the second one was even more ridiculous. Really, just, just the guy just yeah, I, he just got completely flattened from behind. Yeah, yeah, just totally ridiculous. So you've, so you've really got a feel for um, Huddersfield. Yeah, well, they just but, lost a hundred mil. Like, <laughs> well, they didn't lose a hundred mil. They just didn't win a hundred mil. Yeah, so I mean, but you, you've got to think with, with like that's the kind of thing that if you've got a good mentality, they will be back. They will. They cheeky cheeky fiver on Huddersfield to win the championship this this season would um mm-hmm. would not go amiss. Well, this the, I'm pretty sure the last time they got promoted, they won the playoff as well. It was, I'm pretty interesting. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. So they're always there about. They're, they're always in either that that range. That yeah. Like, so, um, yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to be able to do good things with uh the little resources they have. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. But then it's yeah, it would be good to see them so, see them back soon. Oh, so oh, I don't want to put you on the spot, but who, so who are the three teams promoted now? Then we have Nottingham Forest. Uh, Fulham, Bournemouth, Nottingham Forest. Decent. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. So, yeah, it's aw- awesome to see Nottingham Forest in there. You know, a, a fresh face for the last, you know, not for 20-odd 20, 20 years. So, that's cool. Yeah, really good one. Really, really happy to see a, a huge historic club like them um, back in the big time. Yeah. Yeah, great, great. Okay, um... Anything else? Anything else you want to talk about before we wrap this up? Um, no, no, but just a quick shout out to the Forest coach himself. He oh. took over in September. Forest were dead last. What? Are you serious? That's insane. He took over. So, um, Chris Hutton was their coach for the start of the season. Their first win of the season came against Huddersfield, and it was his last game. <laughs> and then he was sacked. And Huddersf- um, Forest were dead last. That's crazy. So, so what? So I and, guess he he was only sacked after a couple of months. Uh, mostly losses, I guess. Yeah, it was basically all all losses, one draw, and then I think the first win, and then it was just like, oh well, you're out anyway. Damn, <laughs> that's crazy. And then Steve, Steve Cooper took over, and it's you know all up from there, baby. Yeah, right. That's awesome. Cool. Um. Yeah, I guess so. Then yeah, they'll probably keep him for the for the Premier League ground. Then if well, you bloody hope so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, right. I suppose there's been we've had a couple of a couple of transfers go through. Uh, I've seen. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'd say we've had. Uh, I saw today Aston Villa have announced Diego Carlos, so now they've signed uh, another centre back. Um. You know, still reeling off this Grealish money. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. And uh, so Spurs have signed uh, Perisic. Very interesting one. Um, um, that's awesome, man. And he said himself that like he's been, uh, he was he's been trying to move to the Premier League for the last thirteen years. He said, <laughs> ever since he wow. played, he played like Anderlecht or something. And he'd had offers from the Premier League then, and every time he was keen, and it just seemed to, seemed to fall through. I haven't been trying that hard then, mate. Well, look, it's the thing is, it's like, uh, oh, you could go to the Premier League, or you could play for Inter Milan. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, not bad. It's not like he was getting bad offers. Oh, and he was in Bayern Munich for ages, right? Like, um, yeah, okay, fair enough. And but yeah, yeah, like he always had good offers, but. Yeah. So that's that's the big one from this week, really. Yeah, yeah, and it's cool. Uh, it's a good move to see. Uh, reunited with Conte as well. And yeah, he's he's loves loving signing some of his own own players, really, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, 
and but yeah, it's funny because obviously when we had Mourinho he uh, at, at Man United, he was pushing really hard for Perisic's signing, and ever and the response from the board was already really like, oh, he's done. Like <laughs> he's oh. like he's twenty nine now. He's got nothing left, and now he's like 32 something, and one. It's- Won the league, won the Italian Cup. Yeah, yeah, and um, scored a few goals. Yeah, yeah, kill it, good player. Like, yeah, and hard, hard, hard worker. So, good move for Spurs. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, and there's, uh, I think, another sign. I don't know if this one's quite done yet, but it was this guy, um, Aurelian, uh, Tuj- Tuj- oh, Chimini. Tuchimini. Yeah, this is like 80, 80 million or something like that. Yep. to Real Madrid and so him and Camavinga together is pretty ruthless um, yeah okay. I, don't, I don't think that's confirmed yet he's still still in the mill yeah but what I have heard was that uh, Kylie and Mbappe call, called him like spoke to him on the phone to try and convince him to come to PSG and he just, just said nah <laughs> so you reject him PSG you know it's probably a high chance but um you know could be could be anywhere who knows maybe he's already made his deal yeah yeah and and then of course uh there's been the rumor mill spinning on Sadio Mane to Bayern Munich yeah that's that's pretty much happening he's already told his teammates he's leaving really okay so that's great yeah. that's crazy i I know some some were saying thirty five mil fee, but I think that's actually wrong. I think it's going to be more like sixty or something. And this is because uh, they have Nab Nabry is 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 going. I yeah, th- I think it's end of contract. Him and Taliso are both in end, end of contract. I think so. They are going to be available, and someone's going to pick up one of those. Yeah, and yeah, so not too bad. Uh, we United have it was officially released Jesse Lingard and Paul Pogba today. That's all confirmed now. Um, looking like Paul will go back to Juventus on another free. <laughs> yeah, Pog back back. Yeah, yeah, and you know probably Lingard to West Ham or something like that. Uh, um, and yeah, I was there any others? I think that was that's. I- I think think that'll do for now. Yeah, well, yeah. Talk about more with Willis eventually. Oh, okay. So, oh, you're right. I just wrote, yeah, I wrote it down. There's one more thing I want to talk about, and that was um, Ukraine's victory, and un- unfortunately not in in the war, but <laughs> they they won a football match. Well, that's pretty good. The second best thing. Yeah, so they, I mean, they, a lot of these players were probably dragged from the front lines of of the war <laughs> to play football. Yeah, and yeah, probably. Went in with that warrior mentality and managed to knock out Scotland. And yeah. uh, Andy Robertson apologised <laughs> for for that match. It was, it was that bad. And so now the Ukraine um, just have to play Wales. Oh, Wales. In their next match, and if they win that, they are going to the World Cup. Yeah, which is um, it's a beautiful one, isn't it? Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, they'd be well, you know, as long as they are still a country by the time it <laughs> rolls around. Well, look, we will, look. I ho- hopefully, that's still the case. Yeah, yeah, surely. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. Right. Well, we might as well wrap it there. Uh, a little bit early, but that's nothing wrong with that. Uh, any any closing thoughts before we take off? Um. No, I think I've done them all. Okay. Excellent. Uh, thanks for listening again to the Football Friends podcast for another week. Like and subscribe, and uh, tell your mates and everything. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Tell your mum. Through. <laughs>